Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hut, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion. Your host, the Hut, we are back here at the Baseball Hut, and hopefully you like this video and let me know what you think about this. This is not necessarily a rant, it's just not going to be a rant, we kind of, I think we kind of played that out a little bit. But, uh, let's talk about the trade market, let's talk about August 1st at 6pm, uh, where teams going to be, and in particular, the New York Mets. So as you know, the Mets have actually played a little bit better over the last uh, few days. They've won three in a row. That's the most they've won since the, the end of uh, May, early June. When they swept the Phillies back at City Field before they went on their, uh, <laughs> that horrible month of June. You talk about a swoon. Woo! Swoon. That was, that was more than a swoon. That was sort of a collapse. But uh, Friday, they were 10 games behind uh, in the wild card. They're now six and a half behind. Now, we do have five games left before the All-Star break. Uh, the Met, you know, I will say this. The Met pitching has picked up a little bit in terms of Scherz has pitched a little bit better. I think I said on, on Saturday, Verlander pitched really well. So, I mean, on uh, whatever the day it was, Sunday or whatever. The, you know, the days get mixed up here, but uh, Sunday. So, they pitched a little bit better, uh, those guys in particular. So, I have my own opinion on where they need to be. Um, in terms of the trade market, uh, they should look to try to move some players that are on this roster, uh, get some more pitching prospects if they can get any. Um, I was not too enamored with the trade that they made on, on, uh, Tuesday, on Monday for, for, uh, Chris Flexen and for Trevor Gott. Because I felt if you got guys that are going to be DFA'd, why are you taking the money of Chris Flexen? You know, when you probably could have made the deal without having to make, have that be part of it. Be that as it may. Um, we have some players that could be on the market. Teams that are probably like on the edge. Uh, one of them being the Anaheim Angels. We know that over the last day or two that uh, Mike Trout, the great Mike Trout, is out for the well, at least for two months. He's going to be out until September. Uh, this injury that he has, uh, Andrew Benintendi had that last year for the for the Yankees, and he missed the rest of the season. He did it, I guess, in August. He missed the rest of the season. So uh, there's a possibility that Mike Trout could be gone for the rest of the year for the Angels. Uh, if you don't know, also last night Shohei Otani, and we'll talk about him a lot in this video. He pitched last night against the Padres, and he had to come out because he had a blister on his hand, blister on one of his fingers. So he wasn't able to pitch. He had to come out of the game. I guess completely out of the game, I guess. Uh, we'll see if he plays tonight, at least DHing. But he, um, you know, he in particular, we'll get into him in a second. Anthony Rendon has been seen in the Angels clubhouse for crutches. This was a guy that they spent all the money that they did for him, and he's been a complete total bust out there in Anaheim. So now, let's look at the Angels in terms of them as a team. They've begun to fade. Uh, they were in second place in the division in the, in the American League West for a long time, but now they're starting to fade. They are, are six games behind the Rangers and three games back in the final wild card, so they are fading. Now, without Mike Trout and without a healthy a productive Anthony Rendon. What are the Angels going to do with Shohei Otani? Well, they could trade him. They could hold on to him. That's really the only two options. Now, if you hold on to him, at least you, you bring people into the ballpark because he's still an attraction. He's an attraction of everybody. So if you keep him, then at least the fans are engaged with every you know time he starts and every time he comes to the plate. If you trade him... You basically blow up your whole season. Especially if Mike Trout's out for the rest of the year. And they don't come around. Um, now there are teams that are very interested in him. Specifically for next year. The Dodgers, the Mets. I would assume the Cubs at some point. Uh, don't be surprised the Rangers are interested. A lot of teams will be very interested in him. In terms of what he can do on the field. And really at the box office as well. I want to point out a couple of things. The Angels for the last 10 years have not had a good farm system. They have struggled to develop any kind of talent on the field. 
aside from Mike Trout. Mike Trout came to the big leagues in twenty in two thousand nine. So that is a team that isn't that has not produced much on the field in terms of prospects. I can't remember the last time they produced a big pitcher, other than Altani, which they signed as a free agent. Uh, and you have a situation where Otani's been there all those years, Mike Trout's been all those been there all those years, and they've had a terrible farm system. They had nothing there. So if you want to know why that team has been so bad for a long time, is they don't have the players that they can bring in to develop a winning culture. And also you use those prospects to trade away. You bring in veteran players or or young veteran players to help your team win. The, the Angels have not done that in all the years they've been there. It's very important to remember, you have to be able to maintain a team uh, through your farm system. Even if you bring in big players, you can't be trading big players. You can't be trading for big players and, and get rid of your farm system. He's the first example of a player that if you make a move for him, you better have a good farm system in case you move. You don't want to you know, get rid of your, your whole entire farm system. Uh, now we have a situation in San Diego. San Diego is in a similar situation as the New York Mets. They've not played well at all. They seem to have the same kind of issues in terms of leadership. They have a good manager, just like the Mets have a good manager. But they're in a situation that, for whatever reason, they haven't fired at all. Uh, and the Mets will be playing them at the end of the week to finish out the first half. Mets have not played well in San Diego in a long, ever, as far as I can remember. Very, here, here and there, they've played well. And they've taken the series here and there. But for the most part, they don't play well there. Anyway, uh, the names are going to start popping up with the Padres of Blake Schnell, Josh Hader, and Juan Soto. And Juan Soto, as you know, played for the Nationals. And that, that was a big trade. That was the big blockbuster trade last year, was the Nationals traded him to the Padres in that big that big blockbuster. Um, and they brought in quite a few prospects to help that team. Now... Let's take a step back. Juan Soto was on a team that won a championship. They started moving pieces out of there even before they won the championship. You know, Bryce Harper, he signed with the Phillies. And then uh, in 21, they traded Max Scherzer and Trey Turner to the Dodgers. They brought in prospects for them. And they're basically rebuilding their farm system. Now, for years... The Nationals were able to build their team up through smart trades, and they had a farm system that produced players, like I said. The obvious ones are Steven Strasburg and, of course, Bryce Harper, Anthony Rendon. Funny, I should mention Anthony Rendon. I mentioned him. He's down with the Angels. So that's why it's important to have a farm system that is able to produce a winning culture and a winning team, and that you can use certain players to get big players to sort of uh, give your team a boost you know, in the standings and do what you got to do to win a championship. Now, here we are with the New York Mets, who, to be frank with you folks, I was very surprised the Mets won over 100 games last year. I thought they would win 85 to 90 games last year, but to win 101 games seemed kind of out of the realm. I didn't think they would. They did that. It makes me, but it tells you the kind of the change in terms of the culture. A lot of t- players on the Mets had uh, career years. You know, and they were able to sort of build themselves up to where they won 101 games. Unfortunately, they faded in September. They didn't play well against the Braves. They didn't play well against the Padres. But one thing we know about the Mets is they did not have a lot of, not a lot of young players on the team. They're one of the older teams in baseball. And they basically have had a terrible year for the first 80-something games. But if you look at this team, this is not a very young team. And when you don't have a young team and they get off to a good start and they play well, at some point it's going to, it's going to, fall apart. You hope it doesn't. But that's why his farm systems are very important. And just at least in terms of uh, the long-term kind of overall health of your franchise. I can give you several examples if you're a Mets fan. 2015 Mets. It's the most recent example of a team that went to the World Series. They had young pitching. Syndergaard, DeGrom, Harvey, Matz, Dries Familia, I mean, oh, he hadn't gotten there yet. That's Seth Lugo. But those five guys helped this team get to the world, helped that team get to the World Series. 
or at least made it seem like this team had a chance to win the division, and the Mets general manager, Sandy Olsen, was able to make the trade for Cespedes. He used a big pitcher and a big prospect of Michael Fulmer to get Cespedes. I don't think people remember that Fulmer was a big prospect here. And he was a guy that Mets looked at, at, and everybody looked at as the next big pitcher that they were developing. So, that's part of where the Mets were as a franchise. Their farm system really built that team to be a championship winning team. Lucas Duda, farm system. Daniel Murphy, farm system. Wilma Flores, Ruben Dahada, David Wright, believe it or not. Travis Darno, although I'm not a big fan of his, Mets developed him to the farm system after they made the trade for with the Blue Jays for R.A. Dickey. So you have these guys in your farm. I can go back further. The 99-2000 team had a lot of farm players on those teams. Edgardo Alfonso, Ray Adonez, um Jay Payton, and Bobby Jones. Guys from their farm system that they cultivated in those 90s teams that were bad. The 94-95 team had, had the best farm system in baseball. And they moved some of these players to pick up Mike Piazza, Al Leiter, Dennis Cook, uh, particularly from the Marlins. So that's why you've got to sort of have that bounce. Now, you have Juan Soto, uh, who has another year on his contract. Okay, Is he going to get moved? Maybe, because he did not come from the, from the Padres. So there's not sort of the sentimentality that you would have if you, if you developed a player. So going back to Shohei Otani. Now, if the Mets were to move, make a move on either of these players, now stay with me. If, if they were to make a move for either of these players, when they are not quite, when their form system is not quite ready, the Mets could put themselves in predicament where the where the where the Angels have been the last few years, mediocre. Okay. The one thing we've noticed over the last few years, uh, the Mets have not developed a lot of sort of. Not a lot of pitching. The Angels are going to want pitching. The Padres are going to want young pitching. These guys, these teams are going to want pitching. The Mets do not have that to give at this moment right now. They have Mike Vassell. They have Christian Scott. Blade Tidwell. Tyler Stewart. He said most of these guys are in the lower minor leagues. Okay. You cannot start moving these players... And, and expect to have sustained um, success at the major league level. And here's the thing about Otani in particular. You hold on to this team. Say this team, all right, say this team goes on a run. Maybe they get themselves back. First thing the Mets have to do is get back to 500. That's the first thing they have to do. They get back to 500, right? With three weeks left before the trade deadline, or four weeks left, or whatever it is, four weeks left. 20 games left. In those 20 games, the Mets have to decide, do they make a big move or do they stand pat? At least with a big move. I think they'll make some moves. I think they'll bring in some more pitching that's on the edges. Now, they have said they're not going to move any of their prospects. They said they're not even going to move Mark Vantos, which they haven't played. They didn't play him in the majors when he was here. So, is it worth, is it really worth doing that kind of a trade right now when this team is not on the cusp of winning a championship? I don't think it is. If they were close to a championship, then you do these kind of moves. I mean, I, I, I mean, I've been sort of thinking about this the last few hours. Is it something worth doing? Because I know people are talking about it online on on uh, uh, on the fan on the fan. They've been talking about it. Uh, people are this mixed. It's important to have strong strong farm system. Because say, for instance, you have these injuries, which you will have. You want guys to come in to be able to fill in. You don't want to keep bringing in these, these like T.J. Stewart. T.J. Stewart's not a prospect. The Mets called him up. He's not a prospect. If the Mets had prospects to bring up, they bring him up and let them play. But he's not a prospect. So that tells you where the Mets farm system is right now. With Alvarez being here, with Beatty being here, this farm system is now the third, uh, is at the bottom third in terms of farm systems right now. It's not very good. Uh, from what I've read and gone through, before the season they were in the middle of the pack. 
But because guys have gotten to the majors, you lose status. And guys go up, guys go down, and that's how you, you certainly bad. It's weird how they do it. But, but the Met Farm system is not where it was six months ago. Now, they're going to have the draft. A couple of things about the drafts the last few years of the Mets. Last year's draft was was considered a great draft for the Mets. They drafted Kevin Parada, which was a big deal because he was the best catcher in the draft. Always need catching. And they drafted uh, Jet Williams, Blade Ted Well. These guys have a chance to be really good major leaguers. In 21, they had a lousy draft because they didn't sign Kuma Rocker and because they didn't sign him uh, for this, you know, for a contract because of his injuries. And it turned out they were right about it. The Mets uh, had a lousy draft because they were going to put all the money into him because he fell to them in the draft because of the whole rumors about his bad arm, his, his bum arm or whatever. Now the Mets, because they were going to put all the money in him, took underslot money for the rest of the draft and it didn't give them a good draft. I've not heard too many players that are from that draft that are flying up the Mets uh, 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 you know, rankings. I have to go dig deeper. I haven't seen too much, so it's been a, kind of a, it wasn't a good draft for the Mets. The Mets did not get good grades on it. So this year, they are going to draft seven of the first 135 players uh, that are going to be selected this on Sunday. And we will see how well the Mets draft and how well this farm system can improve in a big way uh, this year. So we'll keep an eye on that. But it's like I said, it's very important to have a strong farm system, especially if you have a good team. This is not a good team right now. Even with the three uh, you know, wins in a row, there's still six games under 500 or seven games under 500, whatever it is. They're not a good team. So why are you dumping, why are you trading all your prospects for players that aren't, that one's, one of them's not going to be here next year potentially? And the other guy, you're going to have to probably give up more of your future because he'll be here next year. Well, it's a rambling video because it's sort of, I'm trying to go through all these things and trying to hopefully understand what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> but like I, I've been going through the Met prospects. And you need to subscribe to the Prospect Hub, by the way. And I have a video on Juan Soto on the, on the uh, baseball too. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to sort of go through the Met farm system. I'm very concerned by it. Because that sustains success. We've seen that with the Dodgers. That's the best example. The Dodgers farm system is terrific. And it's been terrific for all these years. Why is that? Well, that's what the Mets are trying to do. Hopefully, you know, you'll get this video. You let me know. Let me know. Should the Mets go all out? Trade for Otani? Should they go all out? Trade for Juan Soto? Or should they just sort of do the kind of moves they did on, on Tuesday... On Monday, what the hell, Monday, and get players in that are on the edges, which is probably what they'll probably do, because uh, they don't want to give up too much of the farm system. Leave the comments in the comments section, of course. Thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe to the Baseball Hut. Thank you, and I'll see you later.